Negropians can't help themselves celebrating Massa's heli days. Chasing the serpents out of Ireland is a metaphor for genocide. Number so what St. Patrick is really famous for is waging a genocidal war against the indigenous people of Ireland, who had migrated there many thousands of years before the Caucasians and before Christianity, who were African and coincidentally thought to be pagan. Number candid authorities like the British Egyptologists Gerald Massey and Albert Churchward, the Scottish historian David Mac Ritchie, and the British antiquarian Godfrey Higgins have done exhaustive research and brought many facts to our knowledge. Tacitus, Pliny, Claudian and other writers have described the blacks they encountered in the British Isles as black as Ethiopians cum nigris gentibus nimble-footed blackamoors and so on. From all indications, the ancient dwellers of the British Isles and Ireland, like the Kimri, one of the names given to the earliest inhabitants, from whom the Picts and Scots descended, were blacks. David Mac Ritchie has provided substantial evidence in his two-volume work, Ancient and Modern Britons, that the Picts as well as the ancient Danes were blacks. The Partholans, Formorians, Nemes, Firbolds, Tuatha de Danann, Milesians of Ireland and the Picts of Northern Scotland were all blacks. The Firbolds, believed to be a section of the Nemes, are believed to be so-called pygmies or the Twa. They are the dwarfs, dark elves or leprechauns in Irish history. The British Egyptologist Albert Churchward is convinced that the Tuatha de Danann, who came to Ireland, were of the same race and spoke the same language as the fur bogs and the Formorians according to legend, St. Patrick was well known for chasing the serpents out of Ireland. Now on the outside they make it sound like some miracle that he saved the people from deadly serpents. There is in fact no evidence that real serpents ever existed in Ireland. But if you understand that the serpents they are speaking of are really a symbol for something else, this particular plot point in the story becomes a lot more interesting. As will be demonstrated below the serpents of the story are an allusion to the people of African descent, the Twa, who lived in Ireland. It's important to note that in addition to Twa, some of the names for our people include Naga, Nagar and Negus, which means loosely serpent people or people of the serpent. The name is also synonymous with pharaohs and kings. In many African cultures the serpent is not a symbol of evil, but one of eternal life. Happy Independence Day to Ghana e Ghana holds a special place in Pan-African history. The West African nation is revered as the first sub-Saharan country to gain independence and has traditionally been celebrated as the leader in African democracy and development. On 6 March 1957, Ghana, under the leadership of Kwame Nkrumah, gained independence from British rule, ending decades of white minority dominance. Ghana played a central role in the decolonization of Africa. The country's independence was significant for the continent as it resembled the collective strength of the African spirit and served as a precedent for many African countries to break free from the clutches of colonial rule. The new Ghana formerly known as the Gold Coast due to its abundance of the precious metal, Ghana was named after the ancient Ghana Empire, which was located in the north of modern Ghana and between rivers Senegal and Niger. Ghana was colonized for over a century by the British. Before colonization, the country was made up of several independent kingdoms, including Asante, Ashanti, Ganja, and Godoma. Kwame Nkrumah and the Big Six Ghana's journey to independence was led by the visionary leader Kwame Nkrumah. Tinkrumah, Ghana's freedom was significant not only for the West African nation, but for the whole of Africa too. In his Independence Day speech in 1957, he stated, Our independence is meaningless unless it is linked up with the total liberation of the African continent. Inspired by Ghana, more than 30 African countries broke free from colonial rule within the next decade. While Ghana's independence is largely attributed to Nkrumah, the late Pan-Africanist leader didn't work alone. He was part of the big six leaders of Ghana, who in 1947 formed United Gold Coast Convention which campaigned for sovereignty. The five other leaders were Abbas Sebi Lamptey, Dr. Ako Ajay, Edward Akufo Addo, J.B. Dankwa, and William Afori Atta. The flag IEO is the flag of the new nation was raised on 6 March 1957, it symbolized victory and new beginnings. Designed by Theodosia Okoa, Ghanaian stateswoman, teacher, and artist, the flag consists of three pan-African colors red, yellow, and green. The red symbolizes the blood of the black Africans that was shed during the country's struggle for independence. 
The yellow represents the country's mineral wealth, while the green is a symbol of Ghana's rich forests and vegetation. The black star in the center of the flag was reportedly adopted from the flag of the Black Star Line, a shipping corporation established by Jamaican political leader Marcus Garvey. Inspired by the Ethiopian flag, the Ghanaian flag was the second African flag to feature a combination of red, green, and yellow. The design of Ghana's flag, in turn, influenced that of Guinea-Bissau, which was adopted in 1973. Independence Day celebrations The annual Independence Day celebration is invariably marked by a range of festivities across the country. The day is highlighted by street parties and a national parade of schoolchildren and security personnel at the Black Star Square in the capital Accra. Every year, the president delivers a speech of solidarity to Ghanaians. Celebrations also take place in different parts of the world where Ghanaians have found a second home. Economic development Despite its small size and population of about 28 million, Ghana has one of the strongest economies on the continent. The country's primary economic driver is its trove of natural riches. Ghana benefits significantly from its exports of precious metals such as gold, aluminum, and diamonds. Oil and agriculture are also major pillars of Ghana's economy. The agricultural sector contributes around 20% of the country's GDP and is the largest employer in the country. In recent years, Ghana's economy grew annually by an average of 6%, reaching a record 15% in 2011. While growth slowed in the following years, predictions suggest that the country will post a remarkable growth of 7.5% in 2017. Black doesn't mean death so-called black people on the African continent and in the diaspora are unfortunately still suffering from post-traumatic slave syndrome and krakatosis, along with many other deadly diseases. After personally encountering numerous groups, I won't name them they know who they are, of so-called black people who like their slave masters, Europeans colonizer and Arabs Turks, still subscribe and regurgitate that pseudo-racist bigot propaganda about black meaning death. However in the world of the Bakongo and other Bantu people in general black actually means life and white means death are enemies the colonizers and Arabs Turks have turned the truth upside down and indoctrinated so-called black people with Eurocentric and Arabcentric racist ideologies used to mentally, physically and spiritually subjugate their own people. You want to know why I'm strongly against Christianity? After reading this Willie Lynch style letter you will understand why. Letter written by King Leopold II of Belgium to the missionaries traveling to the Congo in 1883 to spread Christianity. Reverend fathers and dear compatriots, the task asked of you to accomplish is very delicate and demands much tact and diplomacy. Fathers, you are going to preach the gospel, but your preaching must be inspired by first, the interest of the Belgium government state, Dute 1013, 2 Cory 11 4, the main goal of your mission in the Congo is not to teach the Negro, Dute 2837, the knowledge of GD because they already know him, Amos 3 2. They talk and commit themselves to their GD. They know that killing, stealing, adultery and blasphemy are not good. In another word even this beast knew Bakongo had laws and commandments and knew TMH ya long before any European encounter, doesn't it remind you of something, your role essentially will be to easily facilitate the task of the administrative and industrial personnel. That is to say, you will interpret the gospel in a way to protect and serve the interest of Belgium, in that part of the world. To do so you will see that our savages be not interested in the riches that their soil possesses, in order that they not want them, Dute 2833. Thus, they be not involved in murderous competition with us, and dream to live a luxurious life. Your knowledge of the scriptures will help us to use special texts that recommended the infidels to love poverty, such as, the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, and it is impossible for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. You will do all that you can to cause the Negro to fear being rich in order that they may go to heaven. From time to time, keep them from rebelling and keep them in fear that you will use violence. You will teach them to endure anything, even when they are insulted or beaten by your compatriots, administrative. You will teach them that whosoever uses vengeance is not a child of God. You will cause them to follow the example of the saints who turned the other cheek. You will take them away from anything or any act that gives them the courage to confront us. I am alluding myself here to their magic, i.e., juju, voodoo. They should not feel like abandoning their juju, and you will do your best to take them away at the same time. Your action will be essentially on the younger people that they might not rebel, debut 2832. If the commandments of the father is in conflict with what the parents teach, the child should learn to obey what the missionary teaches him, because he is the father of his soul. We must force them into submission and obedience, Dute 2832. Dear compatriots, these are some of the principles you must apply. You will find many more in the book that will be given to you at the end of this session. 
teach the gospel to the Negroes in an African style in order that they are kept submissive to the white colonist, do 2825. They would not rebel against the injustice done to them by the colonist. Make them always meditate on blessed be those that who weep, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Convert the Africans always by means of the whip. Keep their wives in submission for nine months, so they can work for you graciously, do 2830. Require from them an offering of recognition to you, goats, chickens, eggs, each time you visit their village, do 2816-20. Avoid, by all means, the blacks becoming rich. Cause them to sing each and every day say that it's impossible for a rich man to enter heaven. Make them pay tithes each Sunday for church. Utilize this money that is intended for the poor, for our own business investments. Institute a system of confession, which will make you good detectives in order to denounce put down every black, which is a spirit of rebellion against a system. Teach the Negroes that their statues are works of the devil, confiscate them and fill our museums with them. Teach the Negro to forget about their heroes in order to worship and give praise to ours, do 2836. Don't give a seat to a Negro when they come to see you, at the most just give him a cigarette. Don't invite him to break bread with you, even if he gave you a chicken every time you went to see him. Consider all blacks as little children and require from them to refer to you as father. My dear compatriots, if you apply to the letter all this, the interest of Belgium and the Congo will be protected for many centuries. I thank you. King Leopold II of Belgium. This is how Leopold II and his lying bullshit missionaries manipulated innocent Africans Israelites and F cut up the Congo just so they could become wealthy.